because of the freedom of choice and the liberty and everything that we, that we uh, in, enjoy in this country. Yes, these times are not easy. The last 10 years have been quite harsh on some Muslims. But yes, we also have the ability to explain what is it that we stand for and what is it that we uh, believe. And the story of America has been such from the, from the day one. And it continues to be so. So this uh, struggle uh, in the Muslim community to explain themselves is the retold story of other communities in the past, such as Catholics, such as Jews, such as African Americans, and others who had to fight and struggle for their rights. Now it looks, seems to me that it's the time for Muslims to explain themselves uh, what is it that we stand for and that we are equally American as everybody else. So that is why I say this is the closest country to Sharia law that I can think of. Women can be forced or tricked into marriage at the will of their father. Any guesses? False. According to Sharia law, and you can go back to the books, women have the right to choose who they marry. No one can force them into marriage. Now the logical question is what's happening in the Middle East? Well, Sharia is certainly not happening in the Middle East in the cases of the forced marriage. That is the custom of certain nations or tribes of, Muslim, of Muslims that has nothing to do with the Sharia law. And that is present. It's, 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 it's the culture, not religion. Men can marry as many women as they will. Of course, false. The Quran states, marry one. But men do have permission to marry up to four women at a time. Only if he can keep all of them happy. <laughs> Highly unlikely in today's day and age. So it's like God gave us the choice. Thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> this is my answer. So I think I said enough. Uh, if a country is under Sharia law, then all must follow. Imagine a country with 99.9% .9 of Muslims. What about this 1% or 0.1%? Do they have to buy the, Sharia, buy the Sharia law? No, of course not. Sharia law only applies to Muslims, those who believe in it. Historically, when Islam was spreading during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and later in the history, all up to, let's say, 1924, when the Caliphate was abolished, Non-Muslims were not forced to abide by Sharia law. Well, not only they were not forced, but they were allowed to practice their own law. For the Jews, it was Torah. For the Christians, it was Bible. And other communities had their own laws that they were abiding by. And the dynasty, such as let's say, the Ottoman Empire, had this freedom very... Uh, clearly uh, marked and very clearly practiced. I'll give you just an example of my country, Bosnia, that became part of the Muslim Empire back in the 15th century when the Ottomans came in. There is a document called Ahdnama that was given by the Sultan at the time to the Franciscan community that already existed in the central Bosnia in which he guaranteed to them the freedom to worship and to practice their religion. Himself, personally, he gave it to them. And they still have that same piece of paper in their monastery, proudly there for everyone to come and see it. And this is part of the Sharia law. That that's, the Quran states very clearly, there is no compulsion in religion. What is the point of forcing one to believe something when he is not going to believe if he, if he or she is forced? It's only and solely by one's choice and feeling that this is something I want to, to believe and this is something I like to be, I like to be identified as. Uh, in Islam, it's forbidden to uh, force anyone into Islam. It's strictly forbidden. Yes, Islam spread throughout the current Middle East,
rapidly in the first couple of hundred years. It was from uh, the current, uh, today's Spain until the, the Indian subcontinent. But majority of the people were non-Muslims for several centuries. And by the time they chose to be Muslims. And this is how Muslims spread. Islam, the, the control, yes, but the Muslims from other religions solely by their own choice because this is the, the belief, this is part of what Islam teaches. Honesty and kindness are critical to the proper functioning of society. Obviously, the foundation for Sharia law is the concept of honesty and kindness. The version of Sharia law practiced by the Taliban is the truest version. Well, the Taliban forces women, uh, women to veil, does not allow them to work or be educated, enforces constant male supervision, etc. Unfortunately, this was the case. Taliban is not um, in a position to do that anymore. And that's good. A set of religious rules that, what is, what is Sharia law? A set of religious rules that guide Muslims on religious duties and interactions within society. So, back to the beginning of the presentation, what is Sharia law? It is the beliefs and practices of Islam that we just went through. What is it that every Muslim practices and what is it that every Muslim believes? That is the Sharia law. Not a single country, even ones that can call themselves an Islamic state, actually practice true Sharia law. It is their versions of Sharia law that are closer or further away from the true application of the Sharia law as it was applied during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I thank you for your patience. Uh, we'll have more time to uh, answer some questions later on tonight. Thank you very much. We're going to see a short uh, video, uh, a film by Lena Khan, uh, the soundtrack to which is a country western song called A Land Called Paradise uh, by a country singer from Oklahoma who is a Muslim man uh, named Kareem Salama. Uh, and then we've got uh, the Imam and three other Muslims who are going to uh, form a panel on the stage after the screen goes up and we'll have an opportunity to ask questions. So be thinking about questions that you would like to ask the panel uh, and we're going to see a video. 